Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss free radicals and reactive oxygen species. This is the first video on my video series of free radicals. In today's video, we will discuss definition of free radicals and reactive oxygen species, types of free radicals and reactive oxygen species, and in the end, we will see formation of free radicals along with the various multiple choice question asked from this particular topic. The so first definition of free radicals. Free radical is a molecule or molecular fragment that contains one or more unpaired electrons in its outer orbit. So that is the definition of free radical and they are generally represented as superscript dot. Oxidation reactions ensure that molecular oxygen is completely reduced to water. The product of partial reduction of oxygen are highly reactive and create havoc in the living system. Hence, they are called as a reactive oxygen species or ROS. So, that is about the definition of free radical and reactive oxygen species. This is the picture showing the normal oxygen atom with all paid electrons. One electron is in the process of jumping out and this is the picture of free radical or free radical which is a molecule or molecular fragment which contains one or more unpaired electron in its outer orbit. This is the picture of normal oxygen atom and this is the picture of free radical with one unpaired electron in its outer orbit. Now we will see the types of free radical and reactive oxygen species. The first one is superoxide anion radical, second one is hydroperoxyl radical, Third one is hydrogen peroxide. Fourth one is hydroxyl radical. Fifth one is lipid peroxide radical. Sixth one is singlet oxygen. Seventh one is nitric oxide. And the last one is peroxide, peroxine nitride. So among all this, hydrogen peroxide and singlet oxygen, they are not free radical because they are not represented by superscript dot are involved in the reactive oxygen species because of their high reactivity and among all this free radical hydroxyl radical is the stronger one it is the strongest among all the free radicals and among all the reactive oxygen species hydrogen peroxide is the weaker one This is the picture showing the, some free radicals, say for example superoxide anion, hydroperoxyl radical and hydroxyl radical. Hydrogen peroxide and oxygen, they are not an example of free radical. Hydrogen peroxide is included in the category of reactive oxygen species. Compare the structure of hydroxyl radical with the hydroxyl ion and oxygen with the superoxide anion. This superoxide anion is the precursor of all oxygen related reactive oxygen species. Oxygen related reactive oxygen species are synthesized from superoxide anion. Hydrogen peroxide is the weaker reactive oxygen species and hydroxyl radical is the stronger free radical. Now characteristic of reactive oxygen species. There are four important characteristic of reactive oxygen species. First one is they are extremely reactive Second one is they are having short lifespan. Third one is generation of new reactive oxygen species by chain reaction. And the fourth one is damage to various tissues. So these are the four important characteristics of reactive oxygen species. Now functional free radicals. It is not always free radicals are harmful. They also require for various functions like Cellular signaling in various physiological and biochemical reactions, say for example nitric oxide, it required for the signaling mechanism and they also require for the cellular defense mechanism, say for example superoxide which takes part in the respiratory burst. So these are the functional free radicals. Now we will see the sequential univalent reduction steps of oxygen. So this is the picture showing the sequential univalent reduction steps of oxygen after the complete reduction process this oxygen is converted to the water molecule and if there is an incomplete reduction process then it leads to the synthesis of various free radicals and reactive oxygen species like 
superoxide, hydrogen peroxide and hydroxyl radical. Now we will see generation of free radicals and reactive oxygen species. So first incomplete reduction of oxygen. Generally in the body, oxidative reactions are normally ensures that molecular oxygen is completely reduced to water. So there is four electrons are transferred to molecular oxygen so that it is completely reduced to form water molecule. So this is showing the complete reduction process. Over here there is a synthesis of water molecule from the oxygen. So it is a complete reduction process. If there is an incomplete reduction process, then it leads to the synthesis of various free radicals and reactive oxygen species. First, we will see the superoxide radical. So, If one electron is transferred to the oxygen, then it leads to the synthesis of superoxide radical, which is both anion and free radical. Next, we will see synthesis of hydrogen peroxide. So, If two electrons are transferred to the oxygen it leads to the synthesis of hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is weaker among all reactive oxygen species. This reaction is called as a dismutation reaction because this can occur spontaneously or enzyme catalyzed reaction. So this is how superoxide anion radical and hydrogen peroxide is synthesized. Now we will see the synthesis of hydroxyl radical. So three electron reduction product of oxygen is hydroxyl radical which is the strongest among all oxygen free radical. This is the most powerful oxygen free radical. The least powerful reactive oxygen species is hydrogen peroxide. Now common sources of free radi radicals in the body. The first reactions which leads to the synthesis of free radicals in the body is electron leakage in the mitochondrial electron transport chain. Second one is normal oxidation reduction reactions in the body say for example reactions catalyzed by xanthine oxidase, aldehyde oxidase and dihydroorotate dehydrogenase. It leads to the synthesis of free radicals. Then flavin coenzymes in the peroxisomes it generate hydrogen peroxide. Then L-amino acid oxidase which require coenzyme flavin mononucleotide. D-amino acid oxidase which require coenzyme flavin adenine dinucleotide. The last one is respiratory burst. So these are the common sources of free radicals in the body. So this is the picture showing the respiratory burst. So phagocytic cell after engulfing bacteria there is a synthesis of superoxide from the oxygen by NADPH oxidase enzyme. This superoxide is converted to the hydrogen peroxide by superoxide dismutase and this hydrogen peroxide after combining with the chloride it will convert it to the hypochlorous acid by myeloperoxidase enzyme. This hypochlorous acid will kill the bacteria. So this is the picture showing the respiratory burst. In the respiratory burst, there is a synthesis of superoxide radical. And if there is a deficiency of this NADPH oxidase enzyme, then it leads to chronic granulomatous disease. So in the chronic granulomatous disease, phagocytic cell can engulf the bacteria, but it cannot kill the bacteria because there is a deficiency of NADPH oxidase enzyme. So ultimately, it leads to the defect in the synthesis of hypochlorous acid. This is the picture showing the respiratory burst. This is the picture showing the reactions involved in the various reactive oxygen species. So the first reaction is the synthesis of hydrogen peroxide from the superoxide dismutase enzyme. Second reaction is involvement of catalase which converts hydrogen peroxide into the water and oxygen. Third reaction is of glutathione peroxidase which convert reduced glutathione to oxidized glutathione. Fourth reaction is of myeloperoxidase which is important for the synthesis of hypochlorous acid and this hypochlorous acid will kill the bacteria. This is the picture again of various reactions involved in the reactive oxygen species. This one is the ion dependent heber reaction and over here there is a synthesis of hydroxyl radical which is the powerful free radical. So this is how a hydroxyl radical is synthesized from the hydrogen peroxide and superoxide anion and it is the ion dependent. 
again second reaction is again of ion dependent reaction which is called as a fenton reaction and again in the fenton reaction there is a synthesis of hydroxyl radical over here hydrogen peroxide is converted to the hydroxyl radical which is the powerful free radical second reaction is of glutathione reductase which convert oxidized glutathione to the reduced glutathione and it is NADPH dependent. This NADPH is coming from the HMP shunt pathway. This is reaction involving the NADPH oxidase which shows how this superoxide anion radical is synthesized and this superoxide anion radical will take part in the respiratory burst. This is the picture showing the formation of free radicals by leakage of protons from the electron transport chain in the mitochondria, ultraviolet radiation, radiation, cigarette smoking, inhalation of various air pollutant and by the respiratory burst which will ultimately lead to the DNA damage. Now we will see various multiple choice question. First question is free radical with highest activity and the options are superoxide anion, hydroxyl radical, hypochlorite and peroxynitrate. So as we have discussed that highest activity is of hydroxyl radical. So the correct answer is B. Second question is enzyme which catalyze the reaction hydrogen peroxide and give H2O plus O2. And the options are catalase, glutathione reductase, glutathione peroxidase, glutathione as transferase. So the catalase will convert hydrogen peroxide into H2O plus O2. So the correct answer is A. Last question is which of the following is not a free radical? And the options are hydroxyl radical, hydrogen peroxide, superoxide and superoxide anion radical. So the correct answer is hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is reactive oxygen species. It is not a free radical. These are the my references. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get all the notifications from it.